Hi, I'm Verity Babs uh, and I'm someone who works in the art world, but essentially I'm someone who has opinions about art. Uh, so welcome to the first video where I'm talking to some of my friends about art and today I'm talking to the wonderful Josie Peters. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. It's recording. Hi, mate. Hello. <laughs> um, Josie, lovely Josie, why don't you give us a little introduction to who you are, what you're about? <laughs> many things um and that's not a lie yeah uh, a, a pole mouth a renaissance man <laughs> i am a, but a renaissance man um <laughs> in a new modern form um i am one thing in the form of science in that i um finished my phd in astrophysics quite recently um i also do loads of science communication but i'm also an improviser um, I do like Harry Potter improv and like murder mysteries on a bus and uh, what's the other thing I do? Funerals. Um, that's, that's where we met the improvised the improvised funeral. That's what really really cemented us together. That was one of the we did together the improvised uh, funeral. Yeah, our proper firm friendship. Um, yeah, uh, I do that, and then I also do a few drawings here and there. So. Yeah. It's an excellent illustrator. Um, Thank you. Very, very good. We'll talk about one of them later. So the first episode of whatever this is going to end up being, um, it's still unnamed because I've looked at loads of like typing in what different podcasts are called and what different kind of art videos are called. And they've used up all the good names. So we'll work one out. <laughs> I'm very much taking suggestions still. Um, yeah, because all of them are like the word art and then a, a cool, funky word that's, you know, so so we, we're running out of options, but we'll find something eventually. Um, so we're basically going to have a little chat about art and you have picked an artwork for us to kind of bounce off of today, which I've got up here now, which is Henry Rousseau's Surprise, um, which I will put a little cut in the in the video now. Yeah, so why don't you tell me, you know, where have you come across this? Why did you pick it? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? And we'll just have a little chat. This is one of my favourite paintings because, um, so my grandma used to um, expose me to all of the culture and art that London had to offer. Um, she would find us like cheap tickets to like West End musicals and things like that, but she would also take me to all the art galleries and art exhibitions. Anyway, my favourite ever picture and thing that I really remember very strongly is being in the National Gallery and just standing and staring in front of this painting um, for just minutes and minutes um, from all ages. I think every time I go back, because I just, I love the colours and the the fact that it really stands out as something quite different in those very traditional galleries where everything is very realistic and very beautiful. And this like, has more like fun and life to it, I think. Um, yeah I just and and also the sheer size of it like it's such a it's a pretty big painting and um, it's you know they Rousseau's really jam-packed it with like everything is you know a, there isn't really any blank space in it like it's full-on colors full-on rain full-on you know yeah and I love rain in the jungle so that just like <laughs> resonates with me don't know why never been to the jungle um well, yeah like Rousseau's one of those artists that I really know like nothing about all I know about Rousseau is that he got a lot of flack for sort of being not very traditional in terms of like I don't think he went to like a, a really official art school or anything like that so he got a bit of flack for that I've got to be honest this painting doesn't do much for me I quite like the colour scheme and but and the, the tiger does make me laugh like you know when you see those manuscripts like medieval manuscripts where they're like trying to draw a lion from the bible but obviously like they've seen a lion so they draw like, a man's face a, they, yeah they draw like a dog with a hat <laughs> or, yeah exactly like uh um, um, uh, yeah. it's a dragon but obviously the face of my neighbor keith uh, so um so I, li I like that about it um i don't know i i think it's a really beautiful piece I just, you know, I think I'd have to own a lot of other world famous artworks before I chose to own this one. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, burn to Henry I mean, obviously, <laughs> if someone's gonna be like, would you like it? I won't be like, nah. <laughs> I, th I think some of the majesty of it is lost on like seeing it online. I think that is one of those things where like yeah. seeing, seeing the size of it is like you feel more of the atmosphere, I think. Yeah, you because know, there's like this bolt of lightning and uh, yeah. Huge? Yeah, it's, 
I'm not very good at measurements. Um, probably about as long as a man. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing I'm going to measure stuff in now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Obviously, it depends on the man, but you know. Just... Yeah. But, okay. Your average man. Yeah, probably about as long as a man, and maybe as tall as your average woman. I think maybe yeah. I think in that case, a lot of the impact probably definitely is lost. Like if it was kind of it's a computer screen size, then you know maybe I would be in awe of it if I saw it in real life. I think that's what a lot of galleries are having issue with at the moment. Obviously, we are in what week six of um, lockdown. Lots of, yeah. Um, and lots of galleries are trying to go online and and put the works up and stuff like that. But there is just something that you do miss out on when when it's just digital I guess um how are you managing to kind of consume artwork at this strange time uh so I um bought some books a while back after you Verita Babs took me around uh, an art gallery in Edinburgh where we were the sole oh. two people left in the city what? after the end of the Edinburgh Fringe oh, what a nice uh, <laughs> So, um, yeah, you got me interested in actually trying to find out a bit more about art because I found the gallery so much more, yeah, just interesting and enthralling. And, like, everything had so much more depth to it because you were like, oh, did you know that this blue has a symbolic future? <laughs> and, you know, did you know that all the men were painted the same because they all knew who the king was? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I remember. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, I only finished my degree, what, six months ago. That's all gone. <laughs> That's probably the best I can muster now. <laughs> yeah, so one of the ways that I'm consuming art is I don't usually strategically place myself by a bookcase. <laughs> and uh, also, I've had a delicious can of Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so fresh. Um, <laughs> so I, I bought these two, not realising they're both by the same author, Susie Hodge. Um, why your five-year-old could not have done that. And the short story of art. I, yeah. think I, I think I own both, but might not have read either. So, so I, I feel like it's almost like you're going through a gallery because each art, like every double page is a different artwork. Yeah. And then, so for example, because this one's about like about modern art and why your five-year-old could not have done that. There's literally like a little box that like explains why your five-year-old could not have done this piece yeah. of art. Um, I haven't looked at the more um, classic one mm. yet. Um, but yeah, I found that the other day I was sat with a cup of tea early in the morning and it was raining and I thought I need to consume some art because that would make me feel nice. And I flicked through a few of these pages and read about it. And it did kind of emulate that experience a little bit, actually, because I didn't know what was coming on the next page. And there was, you know, this extra information a bit about it. And I had the time to sort of take it in. And it was nice because it was a physical thing. Like I have been keeping up to date with some stuff on Instagram but it's I do find it tricky to navigate in terms of you know you follow the people that you enjoy mm. um but then also you do want to be surprised every now and again so like how do you get that when you only get the stuff that you follow yeah the echo chamber of like you yeah obviously you're following the stuff that you like um and it's hard to branch out of that um yeah that's why you know gallery visits are always really fun but um it's interesting that the, the you know your five-year-old couldn't have done that I remember being well angsty as like a 17 year old doing my art a level and I had like wrote this really big piece about you know saying your five-year-old could have done that is you know you don't get you just don't get it like very angsty and feeling like I knew everything um and I do still feel quite passionate about the idea that no you're like no your, your five-year-old couldn't have done that it's about the ideas and this kind of thing but then I do still find myself going into galleries and some stuff I'm like it, it is a bit rubbish though isn't it <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, I'm struggling at the moment because, you know, obviously I want to believe that, you know, all art, you know, it's all subjective and this kind of thing. Um, but I do feel quite guilty sometimes looking at stuff and I'm like, it's just not very good, is it? <laughs> I mean, I think that's fair. Like, you know, you could go to the theatre and be like, no, this is this is a bad play. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, yeah, just because something is art doesn't mean it's just, oh, gosh, this is another side effect of social media art. The amount of pin-up stuff I see is just <laughs> boring. Yeah. Um, how do you mean pin up stuff so like I will, I will follow things that are about like character design and stuff like that because yeah. sort of part of my part of my art interests are like um just very silly and weird and abstract fun things but also like I want to try and improve some of my technical skills in terms of yeah. you know creating characters and and things like that and um you get a lot of naked 
booby women who like you know they'll be praised for all this high technical skill but when you look at their page all they've done is paint the same unrealistic woman over and over again with like slightly different hair and yeah, like it's really interesting posted a couple of weeks ago about this uh, anatomy book you had and it went through all these poses and you know pose after pose there are there are really interesting blokes doing doing figurative poses and then there are like three pages with ladies on and they're you know kneeling down and squeezing their boobs together <laughs> or, yeah, literally like or, or fainting this. or you know, or, you know um, because those are the only only positions women can be in I'm actually in one now um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and that was really eye-opening and it kind of still goes back to even like teaching people how to draw like it's not just you know obviously the gallery space is full of I'm having a bit of a sort of self debate at the moment about male artists who only seem to draw female nudes mm -hmm. and it feels like when we look back in art history and we see female nudes done by men it's sort of because it's in the past you sort of there's sort of an element of like sort of forgiving it we're like well it's a bit dodgy but never mind but then you have these contemporary artists who are doing it in a far more overtly sexual way as well so I think that some of them are very, obviously very beautiful but then as a woman I sort of feel like oh get away from it, get away from me um I don't know because you know, what's your experience been mm. like with that uh, so I think with that part of it is what bothers me is that it's so like anatomically incorrect like all the <laughs> proportions are so like so wrong and like you know they've obviously focused on like two key areas and uh, I kind of would almost be more accepting of it if it was more realistic like fine even if you have a beautiful woman with a beautiful body but at least if it's a real body and not this like super sexualized and literally imaginary thing that you kind of think like well the artist probably had a wank while he was drawing this so like why do I want to see it like yeah. I don't know it's yeah, there's I can't remember who I was talking to but they were saying you know if if you could get off to it it's not art it's porn <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. keep that to yourself you know keep that keep that in the studio for your breaks <laughs> yeah um, so you can you can have like nudity but it just it doesn't have to be like this brand of it that's just yeah I had, a, I had this odd conversation um with an artist at an art fair won't name names but um I was walking through this gallery and saw, I saw his works and they were off they were female nudes uh, but they're actually quite you know they seem quite interesting and the women were naked but they were it seemed quite poignant and they were doing things and they were actually you know very beautifully executed um so I gave him my card which was so professional I gave him my card I love to talk to him about his work uh, and said, you know, it's really lovely to see, you know, a male artist painting female nudes in a way that feels, um, you know, quite friendly almost. Um, and then uh, he said, you know, well, obviously I'm heterosexual, so I'd rather be painting women than men. And I felt like getting my card, like taking it off him. Like, <laughs> because in that moment, he made it really clear that it is about sexuality. And it was just kind of quite jarring for me as well, um, especially with this kind of, the young women this older male artist was painting just just mm. a, bit, a bit odd um but yeah I don't know I feel like it's one of those things where it's one of those things I constantly talk to other women about so I've actually heard any of the any male artists try to defend it so maybe I'll have to kind of investigate them <laughs> yeah. you're like what what is your you know what are you actually trying to say what, yeah, under, what? undercover art cops <laughs> <laughs> spring on them in Tesco and stuff like that what are you doing <laughs> put a big moustache on and be yeah. like wow look at this sexy painting yeah. uh. like it <laughs> surprise <laughs> like Scooby-Doo yeah. you're under arrest <laughs> for for maybe being a bit pervy Monty I want to talk about Monty because I want to talk about this specific cartoon yeah I'm gonna put it up now it's up Magic. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the art deal um it's just your your work always makes me laugh so much um but this was really lovely and it kind of harks back to the idea that we were talking about a little you know a few minutes ago about this idea that you know your five-year-old couldn't have done that and I just love this thing of mm, mm, yes very good six million um, <laughs> and I guess the so this is kind of a scene of kind of contemporary art dealership what do you think this kind of this cartoon shows your opinion on art pricing like what do you think you're getting at here mate 
<laughs> yeah, I've just been slating people for what their message is and I don't know what mine is. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, th- I think I think some of this was uh, aimed at like well if the art is flattering to the person who's trying to buy it then maybe they will pay more for it like I'm, it's kind of it's kind of like it, it's a, an ego trip for the central character by being like oh yes this picture of me beautiful <laughs> <laughs> it's worth six million I've, and, and that's the thing of like art pricing is such a strange f- phenomenon um when I've worked in galleries that have been in or auction houses and this kind of thing, there is that odd stuff where you go, This is the same price as a house. Um well, and someone <laughs> buy it. <laughs> um and and then at the same time you see stuff when, you know, if you get used to the fact that most pieces in this exhibition are ten thousand pounds and then you see something that's eight thousand pounds you go well that's very cheap you know, it's not very cheap it's eight thousand pounds <laughs> hang on readjust <laughs> exactly and your, your your kind of money thermometer adjusts uh i do love that cartoon so much i think monty's such a brilliant character um what can we expect from you next josie peters renaissance man well, what can we expect oh yeah. gosh what's, com- what's coming up when when and how can we consume you? <laughs> <laughs> you can find me on the Instagram under many guises. Uh, Josie A. Peters and Art Art. Yeah, Art. Um, what's coming next? I am still developing things. I'm trying to trying to do a bit of a bit of personal art growth. You know, like study some artists just for me. Um, might not post it, but uh, trying to just learn a bit more about the art world um or art history mm. uh so i always think that helps inform what you do and makes it better by knowing a bit more yeah i like i really like knowing some stuff about it and that can be really fun to go to exhibitions and sort of know some of the references that artists are making and this kind of thing i think i'm a big believer in not having to know anything to have an opinion on it i think that can sometimes be really fun um because you know if i'd studied russo i'd probably have other opinions than I don't really like it <laughs> 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 I don't want it <laughs> um and I probably have some you know better informed opinions on it but I quite like just letting myself have a have a go at, at stuff and that's what I'm finding inviting maybe my like less arty friends to galleries and stuff like that they feel quite stressed about the idea of having the right opinion about stuff and you go well honestly mate if you like it because it's blue then yeah great that, that's the right answer you know if you like it <laughs> yeah. then that's the right answer you know I mean I get you know that must be what a lot of it is about though right because as, as an artist I don't think you would ex- expect everyone to know about you while you're painting something like that's probably not I don't know I'm sure yeah, I'm sure some people do want that context but yeah I guess that's something that's that the gallery struggle with is basically this debate about whether when you're displaying art, whether you should have labels next to everything, completely explaining what it's about, who the person is, what the references are, why this is about their dad and why that's important. Um, and then some galleries decide not to do that at all. And some decide to put it in a little booklet. And and this idea that potentially writing about art gets in the way of the experience of looking, mm. uh, and whether that's a good thing or a bad thing and, and that kind of thing. Um, it might be nicer to have like a prompt instead of an explanation. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. Like, what if you had a question beside each painting that just sort of, you know, got you to think about it or, you know, five questions that you kind of had on a leaflet that you were like, oh, yeah, this this one is uh, sparks feelings of pure hatred and and, <laughs> and also lust. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all art. That's all art. <laughs> yeah. That's certainly how I feel about all art. <laughs> we're currently in quarantine and things are changing. Can you see maybe in the arts more general a change coming in terms of when things kind of go back to normal? Uh, what, what do you think we can kind of expect? Like how 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 the art world's going to change in the next five years, ten years? I mean, maybe people will, you know, because you're being forced to come up with creative ideas of how to get art to people who aren't in galleries and who can't get through the door um maybe that will open things up to people who are further afield I wonder if it will change what some artists are doing as well um in terms of you know whether 
the the pieces they would create might be different i feel like that could you know maybe that could happen um because if you design something with more the intention that it'll be seen on the screen will that change the way that you make stuff maybe you'll get more like moving pieces or yeah you know it's interesting as well this idea like since you know since instagram's got so huge um artists making works that they know will photograph well Mm. because it's based on the photograph that you'll sell it um and artists who make works that maybe are have really fine detailing or all about texture they're a bit scuppered really because you can't photograph it and when you do photograph it it looks a bit something of nothing so you really have to kind of get people to look at it and at this time obviously people can't be going and looking at art so they kind of find themselves a bit stuck um but we'll see I hope that this kind of makes a move for accessibility I guess like you were saying in terms of I think some museums have had some time now to think about what else they could be doing to think like, fixing their accessibility was on their list but probably quite low down on their list and now that the other to-do points are kind of out the window I hope that they're sort of being able to have like a a longer look at what they what they can be doing so I think that could be interesting. I wonder as well if um, because people are being encouraged to be more creative at home that Mm. some people haven't got as as much to do anymore uh, maybe engaging in art more so maybe you'll get more people who are interested in finding more about it or even just taking a class or something like that um because there have been virtual classes from a few of the big art galleries haven't there yeah they've been really fun MoMA actually has done some online sort of art history classes as well that you can sign up to in courses and releasing stuff for free which is nice I think it's gonna be odd when things go back to normal and they stop making those things be for free I think people will be I'll, I'll demand them to be free have you been watching Grace and Perry's art club no, I've occasionally been yeah, uh, catching up with Noel Fielding's one. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I just think it's nice. And it's kind of these kind of programs are just encouraging people to be like, make stuff. And it doesn't matter if it's perfect. It doesn't matter even if you think it's really terrible. Like, just make the stuff. Um, yeah. I've been finding it very soothing for the soul to be making making stuff and drawing and not ex- not putting any pressure on myself for it to be any good, which is yeah. Which- really good fun actually because I used to put so much pressure on myself when I was a kind of an angsty teen and now I'm a slightly more mellow person in their early 20s <laughs> so I'm happy for it to be a bit crap it's very freeing and I think that's where you get like more ideas because you've not got this pressure like I wouldn't be drawing like silly little monsters and stuff like that if I hadn't gone oh I don't need my mum to like it yes <laughs> <laughs> that was a huge realization I was like I can draw things that my mum may think is crap and that's fine um and that, that's very freeing well mate it has been an absolute treat I will try to edit this somehow <laughs> uh, and get it and get it up on on the old interweb but thanks so much for being part of the first rendition of whatever this is going to end up being oh um, thank you it's been I'm... it's been fun to chat <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stop recording and see if we've lost everything uh we didn't lose everything um so i hope you enjoyed it um i'm sure that the videos from now on are probably going to be slightly differently structured and i will try and stop touching my face so often and moving out of the shot um yeah please do do share it about thank you